Good morning. <coughs> Today, Saturday, September 19th, 2020. This is our schedule. Saturday morning, yoga therapy class. Today, uh, I'm blessed that I'm sharing my personal practice and experience with all of you. It's not a class, it's not a teaching, it's a sharing of my knowledge and experience on a very special, auspicious day. Today is my birthday and also my father and my grandson's birthday. Think about it. Three generations born on the same day and on the same day it happened to be my scheduled Saturday morning class. How much more blessings I can get from the divine. As always I tell you, the divine is guiding my path and I'm following. So today we have a very important topic, extremely important, especially for a yoga practitioners, yoga therapy teachers, healthcare providers, physicians. The title you must have already seen is that is that yoga therapy, its scope, evidence, and evolution. What does all mean? Today, all over the world, and primarily in United States, yoga as a therapy is becoming an established clinical subspeciality. It is going to be the part of a subspeciality in internal medicine called integrative medicine, which we define as a integration of the science of modern medicine with the philosophy of yoga therapy. The integrative medicine today are almost over a over hundred medical schools in the United States, out of 140 medical schools. 15, 20 years back, maybe only three or four medical schools had the department. Today we have over 65 programs, which has a training on integrative medicine, over 25 programs with a full-time fellowship, and 2014, we started having the board certification in integrative medicine. The scope we know, particularly what not to do, what is the area of medical field where yoga therapy can be used. For example, the chronic lifestyle related disorders. Yoga therapy is unparalleled to any other therapy. Chronic low back pain, unparalleled to any other established therapy. Evidence, evidence is there. If there is no evidence, all the medical schools are not going to have this department. Evidence, if you go to the US National Library website, it is called PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D, PubMed. And if you put in a search engine for yoga therapy, you will have over 5,000 articles from established PubMed index journal. 
these are not the journals, throwaway journals, these are index journals. If you put the word meditation, you will get another 5,000 of the established articles. So we have over 10,000 articles already in our online. Evidence. What are the evidence? We are all evidence. We have been practicing it every day. And me, you, and all of us getting better and better for chronic lifestyle related disorders, what we call a metabolic syndrome, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, high cholesterol, dyslipidemia, truncal obesity. I'll talk about it, all this stuff. Unquestionable, there is evidence. What other evidence? We have an established association, International Association of Yoga Therapists, certifying. We have over 4,000 certified yoga therapists. We have the first yoga university approved by state of California in Los Angeles. The first yoga university, in fact, even outside India, is in the United States, called Vivekanand Yoga University. They've started their masters, masters, master of science in yoga. It is an online program, about 30 students enrolled. The program started in August of 24th, and a, a majority part of that program is your yoga therapy. A little survey taken with the participants mentioned about six, over 60% of them wants a certification through being a yoga therapist, through International Association of Yoga Therapy by the time they finish the program. We have one called Global Consortium of Yoga Therapy. We have a yoga therapist from all over the world. We just had a, our international Zoom program last uh, September uh, 15th and 16th, no, 14th, 14th and 15th, 14th and 15th, and have discussed all about it. The program was from organized from Brazil. We have people attending from your United States, from all the time zones, Canada, United Kingdom, Portugal, uh, the Netherlands, Germany, uh, uh, Japan, South Korea, China, India, Sri Lanka. So we had we had people from all over, and that is an established you know, evidence showing that a global consortium of yoga therapy establishing it as a. We call it a, as a respected and established subspeciality in medicine. We'll start the practice now. I just want to give it over. And finally, evolution. Evolution-wise, we have seen that in the United States, if you look at it, the, the, even the word yoga, the yoga was brought in this country in 1893. It is called Swami Vivekananda. Vivekananda. Vivekananda gave a speech on the Parliament of World Religion in Chicago. He described the yoga philosophy. Then he was being invited by all the Ivy League schools to give a talk. And subsequently it came is called your Yoganand Paramangsa, name is the full name Paramangsa Yoganand. Around 1920s, he wrote a book called Autobiography of a Yogi, and that became, say, a masterpiece in the United States. In mid 60s, all the Yoga gurus from India started coming to United States, primarily during that movement. And around 1969, there was a physician from Harvard, 
And uh, he went and studied transcendental meditation. His name is Herbert Benson. Around 69, when he studied the people who took, these are the followers of called Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, called transcendental meditation. And he found that the, in the level of deep level of yoga practice, when, it, when the practitioners in the state of meditation, they have a physiological changes. The blood pressure is coming down, heart rate is coming down, respiratory rate becomes slower, it becomes more deeper, there's a parasympathetic activation. He wrote a book called Relaxation Response. Immediately it became the one of the top best-selling book in New York Times. New York Times. People started looking around. Then came a Swami called Swami Rama. He established a center, now it's called Himalayan Institute, it's in Pocono's. Yogis, by their repeated activation of parasympathetic tone, they can even stop their own heart. They can stop their breathing voluntarily. It is called voluntary control over involuntary function. To Swami Rama, was showed to a physician, his name was Dr. Green, Elmer Green, he hooked him up from an EKG and he showed that he could stop his heart, but when he's stopping it, he developed some atrial fibrillation. So Dr. Green said stop. But what he did in his hand, there are two arteries, one called radial artery and ulnar artery, he could selectively shut down one of the arteries and they could trace the temperature in the fingers. Amazing experience. In India, around 1920s, there is a center called Kaivalladham, Kaivalladham in Lonavela, it is between Mumbai and Pune, called Swami Kaivalladham. He started a research. He started measuring the pressure in the esophagus, pressure in the tracheobronchial area, pressure, you know, putting a transducer outside the chest during pranayama practice and all the muscles. And he has started publishing paper called Yoga Mimamsa from 1920s and is still being published as the established medical journal. In India, we have the yoga research centers after centers after centers. First one is started called Esviasa in outside called Bengaluru, called Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anushandhan Sangstha to the first yoga therapy researcher, the world famous researcher Shirley Tellis. Now she has moved to a big yoga research center. It's called Patanjali Yogpeet of Swami Ramdev. She has published hundreds and hundreds of articles on every aspect of yoga therapy. International Association of Yoga Therapists is doing either annual conferences called Symposium on Yoga Therapy and Research. Another was called Symposium on Yoga Research for almost over the last 11, 12 years now. They published a journal called International Journal of Yoga Therapy. So evolution is there and we're coming to almost to the point that we could able to integrate in our modern medical science. So let's see what is the scope, scope of practice. Let's start the practice. The first practice is going to be a purple wheat lifestyle related disorder. Because yoga is a therapy today is described as a lifestyle medicine. So what is a lifestyle related disorder today? The modern lifestyle gave us a stress. Stress is a fear of unknown, is all this fear. What will happen to the COVID-19? What is going to happen to my children going to school? What is going to happen? I'm taking the plane ride. The fear of unknown is acting in an area of brain called a limbic system. Two nuclei called amygdala and hippocampus. Amygdala responds to fear, hippocampus responds to memory. 
It sends a signal through neurotransmitters to hypothalamus, which is a homeostasis. Hypothalamus sends a signal to pituitary gland, pituitary adrenal axis, they secrete a hormone called cortisol. The cortisol then has an effect on your sugar. What you eat after food converted into all of your body tissues, it has extra sugar, and that sugar gets converted into called omental fat, the fat inside your abdomen. This is called a triftigen hypothesis. That means our body thinks, I may not have any food tomorrow. So body is saving it, not under the skin, inside the abdomen. That called omental fat then acts like an endocrine organ. It secretes a substance called adiponectin, substance called a pro-inflammatory molecule, creates the inflammation, and that inflammation leads to a cascade of phenomena, which is called diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, coronary artery disease, and they call dyslipidemia, abnormal fat, which is a high cholesterol, or is they call your high triglyceride, low HDL, the high density, the good cholesterol. And this combination of truncal obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, dyslipidemia, and <clears throat> Also, also it comes called a, this is called a metabolic syndrome, called syndrome X, also includes your depression, your lot of other psychosomatic disorders. So what is a therapy? First therapy is usual and customary practice through our modern medical science. Why? Modern medical science is excellent diagnostics. Then have a, a treatment which was immediate, immediate control. But the medication, what happens, the acts, medications are phenomenal. If you give a medication, it works right away. But if you continue the medication for a long time, body knows the medication is working through blocking an enzyme or blocking a receptor, body knows how to overcome it. So what do we do? When we start the usual and customary practice, so for example, a breast cancer, heart disease, we do a usual surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or angiogram, angioplasty, bypass, then what? Then we incorporate a relaxation response activation of parasympathetic tone which primarily causes suppression of genetic expression. So if I have a breast cancer after my treatment, after 10-15 years down the line, I get a cancer comes back again. Why? My gene expresses. So gene gets suppressed. It causes a better management of the disease relaxation response. It reduces your pharmaceutical support and it gives you, probably it gives you, the progression of the disease is less or can be reversed. It starts with the very relaxation of your physical body and yoga is called the sthiram sukham asanam, stillness happiness in a pose. Then it starts with a, a, a breathing, the lung. And when your breathing gets properly under control, effortless, then you enter into a state of meditation. Meditation is staying calm in the middle of crisis and the practice it will come and for meditation is called medication. Let's start doing a practice, what is, we do it every single day, the same practice, and let's do it even sitting in a chair. So suppose person who comes to a, your uh, yoga therapy clinic with a, your 
lifestyle related disorder. So what you start doing it, you start doing the assessment of the patient. In Western medicine we call it SOAP, subjective objective assessment and a plan. In yoga therapy we do a lot more. We look at the patients, we call it the koshas model. Look at the breathing, foot sheet to the breath sheet, how the breathing, we look at the mind. We look at their called different koshas. We look at their psychological state. Look at the spiritual state. So like, like for me, and I show you all the time, if you can able to sit down like this posture, this is called a squatting pose. It relaxes, it relaxes your, your ankle, your knees, your hips, you know, back. You know, you're not going to start in one day, but in, in stages, if you can sit down in this, mostly a relaxed in the whole body, then you're able to get up without a support. It is called a sit, rise, test. You already overcome your lifestyle related disorders. So most of the people if you're practicing with me and if you want to sit down in a chair or if you sit down in the ground if you can it's okay. We'll be start doing a, a relaxation practice in a step by step in the whole upper part of the body, lower part of the body, then we'll do a, a sun salutation in a chair. Sun salutation even can be done in sitting down on the ground. Generally we do it standing up, but that is slowly when you build up. First, start our hand. So if you look at our hand, hand get relaxed when you are able to do is called a child's fist. You put thumb inside and close. This is also you call Alhi Mudra. Slowly and slowly you put your thumb inside and close. So today onwards you are not going to close your hand like this. The moment you keep doing it like this and you do it 24-7, you will feel a relaxation in your hand. And the way to test it is that initially, if you put your finger, they're very tight, it doesn't go through. But when you relax, the fingers will go through, your hands will rotate, it will be a state of relaxation. Able to relax your hand, quiets down your limbic system, quiets down your cortisol level, reduces your cortisol level. Incorporate this with the breathing. Lung is like a balloon. It has 6 liter capacity out of which 1.5 liter is called residual volume. Keep the lung open. 4.5 liter of the air can be exchanged. The whole carbon dioxide sitting here to so learn how to breathe out first then breathe in effortlessly and breathe out longer than breathing in. Very easily you can do count of two in, count of four out. Count means almost a second, like a one and a two in, one and a two and a three and a four out. Let's do the hand. If a hand is in the front, first you breathe out. You breathe in with a count of two in one and two in and count of four out with this hand gesture mudra thumb inside and close one and two and a three and a four do it few more times count of two in count of four out continue a few more times you will be surprised how powerful practice is this. It looks like a very simple practice, 
It's a wonderful practice. If you look at a baby, that's the way a baby is doing it. Even babies crying with this. This opens the upper part of the lung. Wrist gets relaxed with extension. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep your eyes closed and do it breathing in, breathing out, count of two in, count of four out. So when you are diagnosed first time with the diabetes, first time with the hypertension, or you have a coronary artery disease, or you're developing truncal obesity, when a diagnosis is made through our good Western medical diagnostic technique, because remember, Western medicine is a science, undisputed. Science is evidence-based medicine. But yoga therapy, on the other hand, is also called a practice-based evidence. You are practicing. So hand relaxation, wrist relaxation. You will feel a profound level of relaxation. Your hands will be turning around. It will be great. Elbow gets relaxed on, it's called internal rotation. This is your relaxation of the elbow. And external rotation is the tightness of your elbow. In fact, any kind of pain, when you get the pain, pain is due to tightness of your ligaments, tightness of your muscles. All the pain receptors are in the ligaments, are in the muscles. Also, when you have a relaxation response, parasympathetic activation, you get a saliva in your mouth. When you're scared, when you have sympathetic response, you get a dry bump. I'm talking over half an hour. I feel I have a lot of saliva in my mouth instead of my mouth being dry. So internal rotation, which you will see when you do a call, call prayer pose to the back, hand will be an internal rotation. It will be relaxation. Shoulder is a ball and socket joint. So you rotate the shoulder like a ball and socket, then we'll relax our neck, and the neck will do with a call bumblebee breathing. So let's do the shoulder. If you can put your hand on your shoulder, it's great. And slowly if you can bring your elbows together. If it comes here, it's okay. You listen to your body signal. Your body signal is pain. If you get a pain, you back off. If you don't get any pain, you come close. And after pain, you listen to your breath. If you create any imbalance in your physical body, it shows up in your breath. So here I am. I don't have any pain. I'm having an excellent breathing. So I breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. And let's do with me. Slowly rotate your shoulder. Breathe in, breathe out. Same number, count of two in, count of four out. If you can do it longer, count of three in, count of six out. I practice every single day. Close your eyes and do it. One very important practice here you need to do, always keep your spine straight. So I'm sitting in my chair, my spine is straight. Even if I go all the way to the back of my chair, my spine is straight. Very important yogic principle. So again, do the opposite. Breathe out first, breathe in, start the opposite. It's called balance. In yoga therapy, health is defined as a balance of your body, mind and spirit. Sanskrit name, Skandha Chalan Asana. Skandha is the shoulder, Chalan is the movement. 
you are doing a movement of your shoulder. A beautiful practice. You also can give a little test of your shoulder. Hold your one wrist on the top. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in and slowly pull it down behind your head down. And in the same breathing cycle, come back in the middle. Breathe in here. Breathe out here. And I'm sharing with you because I practice it every single day. Close my eyes. How long to do it? At home, you do it effortlessly. When you feel little effort, you stop. If you can do effortlessly, if you do between 5 to 10 breaths, this is great. It's a beautiful practice. We relax our whole upper part of the body and the neck at the same time. And also, we create a vibration. Vibration, we call it a bumblebee breathing, Brahmi Pranayam. What the bumblebee breathing is, that our mind gets activated through our five senses. I hear, I see, I smell, I test and I touch. All the information which comes to my brain, if you put the information in a container, that is your mind. So if you can quiet down your five senses, then your brain is in a state of vibration. And you create a vibration which is the same frequency as the brain, then the two frequency interacts, cancels. It's called principle of physics, called harmonic resonance, your mind quiets down. When your mind quiets down, the physical body quiets down. So let's practice few bumblebee breathing, Brahmri Pranayam. Then we'll incorporate the bumblebee breathing with our hands to the back, called prayer pose to the back, and your relaxation of the neck, which is called a Brahma Mudra. Brahma is the name of the Supreme Being, Mudra is a gesture. So in a Brahmri Pranayam, you have done with me all the time, but let's refresh it. Put your index finger in the forehead, in between your eyebrows. Use your three fingers to close your eyes. Use your thumb to close your ear and you close your mouth. So if you look at it, you have shut down your vision, your hearing, the smell and the test. Remember, your vision is the directly connected to your brain. Eyes is a representation of your brain. Now, you will first breathe out first. Take a deep breath in and you breathe out to the sound of a bumblebee. Let's do it about two or three times. Let's practice together. Sitting in a chair, keep your spine straight. Eyes are closed. All the senses are closed. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in.
slowly take both the hands, keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses, take the hand like a cup, put it over the eyes like a cup, let the eyes take all the heat from your hand, and slowly massage your forehead, massage your eyes, massage your face, primarily massage behind your ear, in front of your ear, massage the tragus in part, this is also external auditory canal. This is the this we call an auricular branch of the vagus nerve. You are stimulating a branch of vagus nerve to create a parasympathetic relaxation response. Bring your hand down here, slowly massage on the side of your neck. This is called bifurcation of the carotid artery. This is called a site of carotid sinus. A massaging of the carotid sinus creates a parasympathetic activation. It causes calming and quietening of your cardiovascular system and nervous system. The whole practice I do with my eyes closed, the massage the back of my neck and slowly bring my hand over my lap. By the time you create this relaxation response, believe me or not, your blood sugar will come down. Why? A person who is diabetic or even a normal person, if you give them a little bit of prednisone, which you call a steroid medication, blood sugar will shoot way higher. It is due to your call glycogenolysis, breaking down of the sugar from the liver. Even if blood sugar is 100, it will shoot up to even 400. And it's all due to your cortisol, the steroid. This practice reduces your level of blood cortisol. Relaxation response is a therapy for diabetes. We'll do, we'll do another practice one time. We we'll call it integrative approach for management of diabetes. Very important. Look at all the people who are suffering from diabetes today than our previous generation. It is not due to the genes, it is not due to what we eat. I mean, what we eat is okay. We eat too much sugar, the food is not being digested. All is due to because of sympathetic overdrive. Our digestion is purely parasympathetic. Parasympathetic is called calm and digest. Sympathetic is called fight and flight response. Let's relax up a part of the body. Let's do prayer pose to the back. All of you have done before, slowly put your hands to the back. Wherever it goes. If it goes to the level of the prayer pose, you can slowly bring up a prayer pose to the upper part of your body. And most of you have seen, I've shown it to you before. If not, let me show you one more time. If I'm standing up, you can see, if you go behind the chair, you'll be able to see me. This is the prayer pose to the back. And you keep it there, slowly and slowly. It will go relaxation. It will go higher and higher and higher. These are called also your stages of asana, stages of your poses. At the beginning, we call it a beginning, muscle contracts to let you get to this pose. And if you stay in the pose a little long enough, you start having relaxation. Now in this pose, you'll be doing movement of the neck with the sound of a bumblebee, which will help you extend your exhalation. Remember, when you extend your exhalation, literally yoga says you extend your longevity. Because all the carbon dioxide sitting in your lung is really a toxic to my body. 
And if you look at the toxic material which is coming out from my body, my stool, my urine, my perspiration, those go through physiological process. But able to remove the carbon dioxide from the lung with my voluntary regulated breathing. Voluntary regulated breathing, which is also called pranayama, that's the trick tricks. So I'm talking all this stuff to you for one reason, to see if you can keep your hand in the back, if you're practicing with me, that it will help you to create a, a relaxation. All is done in a chair. All is your spine straight. When you drive your car, keep your spine straight. When reading, when you are having a dinner, keep your spine straight. Now let's do the four postures of the neck with a extension of your exhalation. So breathe out first. Take a slowly deep breath in and drop your neck to the back. And put your neck in front to the sound of a bumblebee, like this. Mm -hmm. doing your pranayama practice, especially ujjayi pranayam, brahmri pranayam, if you get a little coughing, that is a very good sign. That means your right area of your vocal cord, the larynx is getting activated. And the reason is larynx is supplied by the two nerves called superior and inferior laryngeal nerve, which are branches of vagus nerve. When those two nerves get activated, you get activation of the vagus nerve, activation of the parasympathetic tone and the relaxation response. One thing you have to look for, when you slowly drop your head down, you have to be sure there is no pain. If you get a pain, if you have a pain here, you back off. And also, when you come to the posture, you have to have a effortless breathing. What is effortless breathing? You can talk. You can even sing. It's a wonderful practice. I practice every single day, so I'm sharing with you. Let's do it one more time. Oh, one question I always get, even from the doctors, my physician friends, patients, I have a neck surgery before, I have a nerve bone screws there, what should I do? My doctor asked me not to turn my head, not to bend my head. When you listen to your body's signal, when you are pushing it down, there is no pain. When the breathing is completely effortless, you won't be able to hurt your neck, even if you have a previous surgery. Only thing you have to remember, do not take a pain medication and do a yoga practice. Because the pain is telling you to pay attention. Pain is a guide. Pain is telling you what are the restrictions. Let's do it second time. Breathe out first. Deep breath in, drop your neck to the back. Mm. sides with the same practice. Breathe out first, a deep breath in. Mm.
Notice how long is my exhalation becomes. Exhalation becomes longer and longer. Longer the exhalation, longer is my longevity. Looking at the back without turning your shoulder. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Finally, in the fourth step, rotate your head, or drop your head down, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, first go to the left, to the back, to the right, then you go right to the back, to the left. All is balance. Yoga therapy says health is defined as a balance of your body, mind and spirit. And you notice how long I'm putting my hand in the back as a prayer pose to the back. It creates a tremendous amount of relaxation response. Drop your head down, breathe out first, take a deep breath in. take a look. This is the monitor we keep. So we are not telling you anything which does not have any scientific validity. And I'm wearing Apple watch. This is my little older watch. But when you look at the newer one, I don't know if you've seen it, the new one called Apple watch 6. It gives you even your oxygen saturation. It has a pulse oximeter built in. So it tells you how much oxygen you have in the tip of your finger, which most of the people are measuring it today because of COVID-19, which affects your lung first and reduces your oxygen. One very interesting thing is happening. I don't know if you've heard the term that in a COVID-19, people start getting less and less of oxygen and they get used to it. So people come into the emergency room when they even have any symptoms, their you know, oxygen saturation may be in 60s and 70s. Normally we said if it is less than 90, 92, you know, it needs to be concerned. 94 plus is good. It's a percentage, percentage of oxygen. And the new term they're using it for COVID-19 is called a happy hypoxia. Hypoxia means low oxygen, happy means they're happy, they're still having no, no symptoms from hypoxia. So new watch and also a continuous EKG. This one I have a continuous EKG also. I can get EKG, I can just doing my EKG now. Beautiful. 30 seconds, I'm getting EKG tracing after my relaxation response. And to see the effect of yoga practice in my heart. So we are not practicing a voodoo medicine. We are practicing a real scientific medicine integrating our yogic wisdom. Okay? So, 
I just got a report, the EKG is inconclusive. That's okay. I get a next one, I get a better tracing. I think it all depends upon your contacts. So you know, my contact was not... So because of my practice, I keep it little, little loose. Anyway, this is our health tracker. So you know the health. So upper part. Lower part, you know, from your waist down. What you can do when sitting in a chair, you can do slowly, because supported forward bend. Touching your hand to the feet, you can do standing up, we do it standing up, you can do anything. A powerful scope and powerful evidence. What is the evidence? When you have a acute back pain, when you have a chronic low back pain, you continue a practice of yogasana and a pranayama. But when you do a, a active practice, we need to get a acute, acute back pain. So you put your hand, you support yourself, and slowly see if you can come down. If you can slowly come down, and how far, remember what you're looking for, pain and effortless breathing. If your hand comes all the way down, it is good. Then what you can do, put your hands on all the way to the side and see if your head comes towards you. Stay in the posture, breathing out longer than breathing in, with a 5 to 10 breath. And when you get up again, do a supported, do not get in and out without a support. Evidence. What is evidence? It's a guaranteed your acute back pain will go away. Let me show you the technique. You know, we get a back pain. The pain, you know, we call it a slip disc. We call it a spinal stenosis. But it is basically an irritation of your nerve. It irritates the nerve. If you keep your spine straight, it's called your Dandashan, it's called your stick, or it's called your Tadasan, mountain pose. Jashtiyasan, stick, you could put your body against the wall and keep your spine straight. So, if you look at it, you get acute back pain. If you can put yourself and put your body as a straight. So here I am, if you can see me, okay, I'm a little far from the camera, but here, first you touch the back of your heel, then your hips, your shoulder, back of your head, close your eyes, put your hands all the way high up here, and breathe out longer than breathing in. Stay there between 5 to 10 breaths. You will see the difference, what happens to you. And again, if you go back more and more, and you will see, you will see more and more that in the same posture you've been doing it. Next is called supported forward bend. Scope and evidence. In a supported forward bend, what you will do, let's see if you can see me, yeah, you can see me, I will put my head, slowly, this is a countertop, I'll come close to the countertop, I will put my head on the countertop, let my hand loose, close my eyes, and I'll be breathing out longer than breathing in. Within a short time, this muscles in the back were just tight. It felt like a piece of stone it's going to go and slowly and slowly going to get melted. 
So in stages, you can keep on going down. This is this is about a certain height, about three feet height, thirty six inch. Now you come to let's say in the sofa. Here you are. I know it's blocking a little bit, but still you will be able to see. I put my I put my head down, support my head, hands are relaxed, and breathing out longer than breathing in. Wonderful practice. And this is evidence. If you look at it, you'll see slowly and slowly. Or you can go a little further down. So this is a little bit further down. Here, here you can do it. So in stages, remember in stages, impossible become possible. Here I am, slowly I'm coming down, putting my head down. I'm in a profound level of relaxation. Or you can do a, a supported back bend. Supported back bend I can do against the wall. Or I can do on a mat so I do a cobra pose. When I do a cobra pose in a mat, that is a supported forward bend. Sorry, let me rephrase it. When I do a cobra pose on a mat, you know, Bhujangasana, it is a supported back bend. And a therapy for chronic low back pain is supported back bend. Remember, pain is due to our body type, it's called vata. Vata is called mobile, mobility, mobility of your mind and body. So if you do back, go all the way to the back, all the way to the front, when you have an ailment like a acute back pain, you're going to hurt yourself. It is okay for us, you know. I mean, I had a serious acute back pain, but I have a you know, I have overcome with my daily practice. I practice daily, so I don't feel it anymore. I, you know, I have to admit, I do have, I do have some low-grade still back pain. It doesn't, it's not going away. But I really, really, really do not get those acute back pain. For the feet, lower part, it's very important. So if you look at your foot, if you can separate your toes. So what we do, if you if you are, if you can put your feet on the ground or a little higher, separate your toes with a breathe in, breathe out. Toes will get separated, toes will bend. Breathe in, breathe out. I do it with my eyes closed. I practice every single day these things. Ankle you do, breathe in, breathe out. The market is full of it. Yoga toes, yoga shoes, yoga socks. But here, look at what we do. I'm putting my feet high up. I take my hand, I put my hand in between my toes and I separate my toes. It's a wonderful practice. I do it all the time. I'm watching my television, reading a newspaper. And I showed it to you. I the yoga practice is 24-7. People ask me, how long do you do yoga? I said, I know I yeah, I do practice in the morning as a part of my daily routine, but my whole day. I'm breathing, I'm breathing out longer than breathing in from the whole day I'm practicing. I'm putting my finger here. It quiets my mind, quiets my body. 
all the news you see today, which is fearful news, does not affect you. You are totally, you are totally relaxed. Knees, you can bring the knees high up. Slowly you can drop the knees down in the chair. It's very nice practice. In the knees, or you can bring it up a little bit. We will do a little sun salutation, you'll see it will be affecting the whole body. The sun salutation in a chair, we can do sun salutation even standing up. The moon salutation, moon salutation is more cooling. But always develop the pain. If you get a pain here, back off. Even back off if you can if you cannot do it, put it in a support. Like maybe you take this small table and put your feet there. To fit hand up here, same thing, put your hand here. It's so very nice. Slowly bring your whole body close to you. Eyes are closed. I'm doing breathe in. Breathe out. It's a wonderful practice. Sitting down, you can do your butterfly, Kaltitli Asan. <clears throat> it's a very nice asan. You can do your lot of asanas. <clears throat> you can do almost every asanas sitting in a chair. But by the time you are, you start at the beginning to incorporate your yoga practice in your lifestyle related disorders, you do it very slowly and in stages. So let's do a practice of your a sun salutation in a chair. Or before that, let me ask you one thing. You know, a yoga therapy primarily is not recommended for any acute, acute condition or for chronic condition. But we have some anecdotes. Anecdotes like we have people who are teaching a breathing technique on a patient, the pranayama, with voluntary debilitated breathing. Patient even in in, uh, in uh, intensive care unit, ICU. Recently, not recently, sometime back, uh, person who was practicing with us, one of our yoga therapy participants, she told me that her granddaughter was practicing yoga asana and a pranayama with her. And she's young, I don't remember exactly, maybe 16 years old. But she knew what to do a longer exhalation than inhalation. She got into some respiratory problem. She was in the hospital. She was in oxygen. And her grandma, who is a yoga teacher, visited her. And during the visit, she is saying, remember the breathing? Why didn't you start breathing out longer than breathing in? She started doing it. When grandma was there and she was hooked up to the monitor, and grandma said she could see her oxygen level is going high up. Anecdotes doesn't help in medical science, but that's the beginning. You know, we always start with a case presentation. We get some unusual case, we do a case presentation. Then another person puts a case presentation, another person will critique that case presentation, and slowly and slowly we build up multiple cases. Then you do a randomized control trial called RCT. Slowly and slowly you get established. So as a researcher, as a physician, 
we really do not reject any case studies, any anecdotes. We believe them and we slowly progress on that. In a sun salutation, it said 12 poses or 12 asanas. And in a therapeutic sun salutation, you do it with your breathing. You do an alternate breathing with a therapeutic asana, a therapeutic sun salutation, and the breathing you coordinate. If you start with the breathing in, you will see you'll end up with breathing out. Each posture, you hold it for a while, and based on your body type, if you have a vata, pitta, and kapha, vata will do a very slow, very coordinated asanas. Kapha, on the other hand, will do a little faster sun salutation, and pitta primary will do a called moon salutation. So let's do the sun salutation in a chair. First, put your hands in front. This is called your pranavasana, prayer pose. So breathe out. Breathe in, raise your hands up and slowly put it to the back. When you raise your hands up, this is a very interesting way to do it. I've been doing it. I don't know where you learned it from. You drop all the fingers down, keep your index finger up and the thumb. You will see your gauge follows you very clearly. Your gauge is at the tip of the index finger and follow the gauge, breathing in all the way to the back. Then breathing out, slowly put your hand down, called Padahastasana, hand touching your feet. Breathing in, called horse riding pose, Asa Sanchalanasana, you hold your knee, trying to put your one foot, trying to put it in the front, open your chest and look at yeah. Asa Sanchalanasana. Breathing out is called Parvatasana, mountain pose. Bring your feet all the way high up in a chair. Hold it to this and slowly bring your head touching your knee. Parvatasana. Get into your Ashtanga Namaskar. Touching eight points on your ground, and this time you put both the feet together. Slowly bring your hand down. If you can put your hand all the way down, and then up the chest and look high up and slowly get into the ground. Ashtanga Namaskar. From there you get into Bhujangasana, breathe out and get into Cobra Pose. Hand to the back, chest opens up, look all the way high up. From the Bhujangasana to the opposite side of your horse riding pose, Asa Sanchalanasana. Hand holding the knee, the foot comes in front, chest opens up. Look high up, breathing in. Breathing out is your mountain pose, Parvatasana. The feet comes on your chair. You hold your knee, head comes and touches your knee. From the your Parvadasan, you go back to your Padahastasan, try and touch your feet. You separate your feet down, 
hand comes all the way down, touches the ground. This will be your breathing in. Breathing out, hand goes all the way to the back. This is your hand rising pose. Hasta Uttanasana, so breathing out, and then Pranamasana, breathing in. Twelve asanas, it repeats, same asanas, after sixth step, along with the breathing, and generally we practice in pairs, two, four, six, and we do a little faster, we can do a faster about four or five sun salutation in a minute. We practice to do about 108 sun salutation. So let's do the other one. We'll start in the opposite opposite side this time, and opposite breathing. What was the breathing first time? Was breathing out. Let's do breathing in this time. Hands in the front. Again, for all yoga practice, breathe out first, then breathe in. Breathe out, slowly put your hands again, look at your index finger at a gate, all the way high up and all the way to the back. Hosto Uttanasana. Breathing in, hand comes down, hand touching your feet, Padahastasana. First riding pose, Hasta Sancharanasan, breathing out. Hold your knee, trying to put your hand there, chest opens up, look higher. Breathing in, Parvatasana, take your feet close to you, hold your knee, slowly bring your head down, touch your knee. Next, breathing out for Ashtanga Namaskar, touching eight points on the ground, put your feet on the ground, both the feet together, hand slowly comes down, goes all the way to the ground, a little bit on the front, chest first opens up, and whole body comes down. Ashtanga Namaskar. Breathing in, get into Bhujangasana. And here, chest opens up. Cobra pose. Breathing out. You get into your Parvatasana, mountain pose. And feet comes way high up, hold on to your knee, head comes down, touches your knee. Next is your Asa Sanchalanasan, and goes high up, goes all the way to the back, breathing in. From there, you come back again in Padahastasana, hand touching your feet, hand goes all the way down, touch your ground, head comes towards your knee, so breathing out. Breathing in, hand goes all the way to the back, hand raising pose, Hasta Uttarasana, and breathing out, hand is in the front in a pranavasana. We started in breathing in, ended with a breathing out. So 
So now you have seen the scope. By the time you keep on doing it, you will see the scope is that first we see from our experience and from our research is the reduction of the pharmaceutical support. Like all the medications you've been taking, all the medications you've been taking for your lifestyle related disorder, the dosage of the medication starts to come down and eventually at a certain point even the patients are free of medication. The other scope, you had a quality of life, sleep better, you get a proper elimination, you get a good digestion, sign of good digestion, lightness in your body and mind, no smell in your excreta, appropriate hunger and thirst, appropriate natural urges. We know all this stuff. What a sign of a strong digestion, easy elimination, and a dreamless sleep. It's a wonderful scope and evidence for your lifestyle related disorder which is called metabolic syndrome and frontal obesity, diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease and dyslipidemia, abnormal blood fat. When the body gets relaxed, then you start practicing of pranayama. Practicing in the pranayama, first thing is called manasthi. Mind needs to be still. In yoga says, body needs movement, mind needs stillness. Stillness of the mind comes when you close your eyes. Because the vision is most dominant part of your five senses. Called pancha indriya. Five, your <coughs> senses. Five senses keeps us awake, alert, and mind is in a stage of called a chattering, chattering of your mind. Chitta vritti nilo. Eyes closed, spine straight, hand, if you're more relaxed, your hand opens up your lung. In yoga practice, if you touch tip of your index finger and thumb, this is called Dhyana Mudra, Gyana Mudra. This is basically quieting down your mind and when you put your hand facing high up. You do the same hand gesture mudra, put your hand down. This is your called Chin Mudra. It opens the lower part of the lung. Normally, the lower part of the lung is always open because whatever air you breathe in, it goes to the lower part of the lung first. If you take your hand, close your other fingers, still keep touching your index finger and thumb, it is called a Chin Mai Mudra. Chin Mai Mudra, it opens the middle part of the lung, which opens partially when you try to doing it little deeper breathe in. Upper part of the lung almost never gets filled up, never gets opened up in a regular breathing. It only opens up when you practice the voluntary regulated breathing and primary with a mudra called the Adhi Mudra. Adhi Mudra is thumb inside and close and put your hands there opens up upper part of your lung. When the breathing gets deeper and deeper and deeper, you do a call of three stages breathing. When you breathe in, the upper part of the lung fills up, middle part of the lung fills up, upper part of the lung fills up. You will see when the lower part, your abdomen gets filled up a little bit. When the middle part, chest opens up, and when the upper part, your clavicle gets raised. It's a wonderful practice. Initially, the voluntary regulated breathing, the practice is you breathe out longer than breathing in. So breathe out first, 
you breathe in with a count of two in, count of four out, count of three in, count of six out. You can keep on going slowly and slowly and you will see with the practice it gets better and better and better. We've been practicing so long, we can do count of 18, count of 16 out. Even you can do count of 10 in, count of 20 out, 10 seconds in, 20 seconds out. So let's practice with the Adhi Mudra. Eyes closed, spine straight, breathe out first. Let's do count of 3 in, count of 6 out. For me it is very easy, for you, you always listen to your breath and only practice where you can breathe. Do not cross your limit of breathing. Very, very important concept. For me, let's progress, I want to show it to you how easy it is for me. Count of five in, count of ten out. I breathe out first. Count of five in. Count of ten out. Wonderful practice. This too I can do one, like count of eight in, count of sixteen out. Slowly breathe out first. It's a wonderful practice. Even I do, I do a little relaxation response with uh, my breathing. People who have a knee problem, lower limb problem, I tell them, why don't you start doing a little bit of eagle pose. Take your one foot and slowly wrap it around. If you cannot wrap it, wherever it comes, it comes here is good. But if you can bring it down and if you can slowly wrap your leg around your leg, this is called your Gururasan or Eagle Pose. Stay here in this pose. I do my breathing. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Three basic pranayamas we incorporate as a scope and evidence in our modern Western medicine. First one is bellows, pastrika, active inhalation, active exhalation. Going against the grain of your habit is also yoga. So normal breathing is active inhalation, passive exhalation. So simply, you do Adhi Mudra, I'm in a Gururasan, even I can put my hand here or hand on my, on my handle of my chair, so I'll do
I continue. I continue as long as I can without having any effort. And see, when I'm doing it, I just want to show it to you again and again and again. I have saliva in my mouth. My mouth is wet. Slowly and slowly, when I'm building it up, I can start doing this Bastrika Pranayama a little bit little faster. So the, the fastest I'll do... Five counts, 50 counts, 100 counts. Generally, sometimes I can do 200, 400, 500. I have absolutely not the issue because I keep on doing it every day. You also can do a very rapid Vastrika Pranayama. But remember, this has to be completely effortless. Effortless means you will feel like this is your normal breathing. You will feel like you can talk, you can breathe. The moment you have any effort, back off. Since we are doing it, I can show it to you. My hands on my knee. Get up. Very gently and gently extend it. So, like I have a little problem with my right knee. So, in this posture, my right knee is getting relaxed, feeling better. Any problem you have, any knee joint, do this sitting down and do your breathing exercises called pranayama. You'll forget all about it, what is happening here. It's a wonderful practice able to relax your physical body with your breathing technique. You also can do the bellows with your physical posture, like a hand raising. You can do three speeds, slow speed, medium speed, and a rapid speed. We generally do 20 slow, 20 medium, 20 very fast. Like a one cycle, then you repeat the cycles, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles. But remember again, it has to be effortless like a normal breathing. So let me show it to you. So how the slow will be do like when you bring it down, you bring it down with a like your thumb inside Adhi Mudra, spine straight, eyes closed. What is the effect in the whole body and mind? Here it is. We can see everything here. All our body physiological functions. This one has a sleep cycle, but the new one has a sleep tracker. After six, after about six, 
you can see what is your stage four sleep, the deep sleep. Medium, medium speeds. Take into the rapid, very fast speed about 20. Complete your one cycle. breathing. Nothing is affecting me. You can also do the chest opening. This is called Bastrika chest opening. Look, I'm in my eagle pose. Okay? Yoga says balance it. So, let's balance it. Put one foot here. Take the other foot. Put it around. Wrap it like a eagle pose. Gurudasana. And keep doing your pranayama practice. Chest opening. Breathe in. Breathe out. In a yoga therapy in the balance, now you can do same practice in the opposite breathing. What does it mean? We did a breathing in, breathing out. So the breathing in, breathing out. It will be like this. If you can continue, keep doing it. You will see the difference when it takes you. It is a exercise of your lung. It improves the functions of your lung. When you go for, like I said, pulmonary function test, you will see your pulmonary function test gets better. A pulmonary function test, the one tells us the state of your health. It's called FEV1, forced expiratory volume in one second. You breathe out first, take a deep breath in, see how much air comes out in one second when you're trying to force it. It will look like this. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in and force it out in one second. through your nose, down through your mouth. Whole breathing is down through your nostril. Breathe through your nose, the air gets filtered. Nose is like your personal air conditioner. Outside the air is warm, it will cool it down. If it's cold, it will warm it up. Along the side of the nose, there is a two channel called turbinate. Those channel drives the air exactly to larynx, where the air is supposed to win goes into trachea, then go to the lung. So all the air you breathe it through the nose, it goes into the lung. If you breathe through your mouth, you don't know where the air has gone. First of all, it never gets filtered, it never gets your air conditioning. And also through the nostril, when you breathe in, nostril releases your nitric oxide. It's a powerful vasodilator. If you have to breathe through your mouth, more physiologically is you breathe through your nostril, breathe out through your mouth.
Next pranayama, which is very important as a part of your, as I said, the scope and, and evidence and evolution, is called breath of fire, kapalbhati pranayama. After your vital organs, all the disease is here. This is called your abdomen, liver, spleen, stomach, pancreas, small intestine, large intestine, for women, uterus, tubes, ovaries, men, prostate, blood, all the disease takes place here. Yoga says we massage this organ. Look at the belly button, push the belly button in, it hits your diaphragm, hits the balloon, there's a one balloon, two balloon, air comes out. Active exhalation and there is no inhalation. Inhalation is automatic and passive. Active inhalation and active exhalation, passive inhalation. Totally opposite of normal breath. Normal breath was active inhalation, passive exhalation. You do different mudras. This is your called dhano mudra or gana mudra. Quiets down your mind. When you put index finger down, it's called your vayu mudra. It controls your pain. Touch your middle finger. This is called shunya mudra. It improves your hearing. Touch your ring finger and thumb. This is your called Prithivi Mudra or Mudra of the Earth. It is grounding. It is for obesity, trunk and obesity. This is for your lifestyle related disorder. Touch your little finger called Varun Mudra. This is for your bladder and fluid content of your body. It's called Vayana Vayu. This is for the ring finger, little finger, thumb, Shakti Mudra, Prana Mudra your strength. Middle finger, ring finger and thumb, Kalapana Mudra, downward forcing place, is called Pachal Mudra, cleans up your whole body. Put your index finger down, this is called your Rida Mudra, this is improving your heart and lung function. A lot of other mudras there, but basically what it is, if you look at a person who is dying, it first goes into the last breath. It's an expired. The lung stops, then the heart stops, then the brain stops, all cellular function stops. If you improve your lung function, then the heart function gets better. Brain function gets better, cellular function gets better. So by with a good pranayama practice, heart function is getting better. So coronary artery disease, cardiac functions, ejection fraction, all of them probably slowly and slowly gets better. Heart gets better because you have an increase in the preload. Because of the pranayama practice, you get a more negative intrathoracic pressure, more blood comes to your heart, and reduction in the afterload. Where all the blood vessel relaxes, peripheral resistance comes down, so the ejection fraction gets better. Improves your brain function, improves the cellular function. So pancreas, beta cell, secreting insulin, it gets better. So the diabetes, I'm doing Kapalbhati Pranayama. So say for the diabetes, you do your Prithibi Mudra. Mudra of your ground, ring finger and thumb, put it here, close your eyes, Bring your belly button to the abdomen and do one per second, very slowly. See, all I did, my awareness was in my belly button, I pushed it back, I had no idea about my breathing. That breathing was effortless, passive, in between exhalation for me without knowing it. I did not know even I've been breathing. My focus is all there. In a normal Kapalbhati Pranayama, I practice every day with all the mudras. I put every mudras, I put about 30, 40, 50 in each mudra, and I keep on doing it. 
Generally, my practice is one hour of practice, 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation. But for metabolic disorder, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, for all the metabolic disorder, I like to do in the touching wedding finger and thumb and continue doing Kapalbhati Pranayama. If you're doing with me, continue doing it and I'll tell you the benefit of this. Don't stop, keep doing it, let me tell you the benefit. It massages your liver, it massages your stomach, massages your spleen, massages your pancreas, massages your small intestine, massages your large intestine. For the female, it massages your uterus, massages your tubes. Massages your ovaries. For the man, it massages your prostate. Massages your urinary bladder. It also massages your diaphragm, the muscular structure between your chest and the abdomen. It massages your lung. All the toxic carbon dioxide is coming out. In between the lung is sitting your heart. Massaging your heart. When the heart stops, we do a chest compression from outside, which is called CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation is massaging heart from outside. Here we're massaging heart from inside. extremely efficient therapy for people with their heart disease. Very gentle massage from inside. It's a wonderful practice. Keep doing it initially until you have a effort. Initially it could be 30 seconds, it could be one minute. But slowly and slowly you see if you can do between 5 to 10 minutes and the Kapal Bhati Pranayama. Kapal is a forehead, but is a shining. When it does, it ignites your, called Agni, Jathar Agni, the digestive fire, the tejas inside your body and mind. It looks like you're glowing. Alternate nostril breathing balances both sides of your brain. Have your hand, touch your index finger and thumb, put it over your knee. Right hand, close your right nostril. You don't have to go all the way down, just close underneath your nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril first. Breathe in through your left nostril. Drop your hand, close your left nostril with an ink finger and little finger. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close your right nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril. Keep doing alternate nostril breathing and let me tell you the benefit. Left nostril is controlled by the right brain. Right brain is intuitive, right brain is female, right brain is cooling. Left nostril breathing is called cooling, Chandra Nadi, moon energy, Aida Nadi, and also parasympathetic tongue. It's also called a Chandra Bhedi Pranayama, cooling pranayama. When you feel heat, hot, you breathe through your left nostril.
right nostril is controlled by your left brain. Left brain is analytical, left brain is male, left brain is sympathetic, left brain is hidden. Right nostril breathing is called surinari, sun energy. Right nostril breathing called your Sympathetic tone and heating. So if you're feeling cold, you breathe through your right nostril. Slowly bring the awareness. You put your index finger and middle finger in the forehead. Do the alternate nostril breathing. And for the balancing purposes, take the left hand and hold it to your right ear low. This is called your super brain yoga and continue your alternate nostril breathing. Slowly and slowly you will see your focus is all on the alternate nostril breathing. You will be in a total meditative state, you will be in a meditation. You will be able to do alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. You enter into a deep level of consciousness and your meditation practice. There's a lot of pranayamas you practice, but you practice these three, Vastrika bellows, Kapalvati pranayam, breath of fire, and alternate nostril breathing, Unulom Vilom pranayam. Slowly and slowly you incorporate a breath holding, breath holding in inhalation, breath holding in exhalation, I'll show you breath holding and inhalation with a, well, a chin lock. It's called Mursha Pranaya. It is very good for your to induce sleep. You can do your abdominal lock. You can move your abdomen called Nisar Kriya, but the Brahmari Pranayam, Bumblebee, and Ujjayi Pranayam. In Ujjayi Pranayam, you constrict your, la your larynx and try to breathe in. It's called resistive inhalation and it stimulates your vagus nerve. It creates a profound parasympathetic activation. Then you incorporate a chin lock. In a chin lock, when a chin comes towards your chest without bending your neck, it stimulates your carotid sinus. Carotid sinus also creates a profound relaxation response. Then you're doing a breathing through your left nostril which is called Chandra Bhedi Pranayam, which is called your cooling breathing. Wonderful practice for your lifestyle related disorder. It will quite down your cardiovascular system, quite down your neurological system, and you will have a, a unconditional dreamless sleep, which will be the therapy for lifestyle related disorder. Primary cause of the lifestyle related disorder today is insomnia and sleep apnea, activation of your limbic system of the brain. So again, put my Adhi Mudra here and breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out.
a little victorious breathing. Ujjayi pranayam, constrict my larynx, try to breathe in. With that, I create a relaxation response. My abdomen was going in, called Udhyani Band. Chin came down, like I call it chin lock, Jalandhar Band. And the left nostril breathing is called your Chandra Bhedi Pranay. One more time. Breathe out first. Deep breath in. This is called resistive inhalation. You are trying to inhale against resistance. You do resistive exhalation. Call your Shankha Pranayam. It improves your lung function. You do same Adhi Mudra, both the hand, put one on the top, that like blowing a conch shell. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and trying to blow it against resistance. Wonderful practice. By the time you finish that, you come to a state of your meditative state. Close your eyes, keep your spine straight, touch your index finger and thumb. We'll finish with the alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril and in silence. You stay in silence and let me tell you the proceedings. First you visualize, you visualize your breath, breath is coming through your nostril, the breath is getting filtered, breath is getting air conditioned, either it is getting cold or warm based on the outside temperature, breath is going side of your nostril, going inside your larynx, trachea, in the lung, lower part of the lung, almost to the level of belly button. Then with the breathing, generally you get a little bit of a pause at the belly button. You guys call it Kibble Kumbhak. Visualize your breath coming out from the lower part, the middle part of the lung, upper part of the lung, behind your throat, coming out through your nostril, your prana resides outside your nostril. Prana is a subtle energy which keeps us awake, alert and alive. Breath is picking up the prana. In yogic tradition, the whole body does breathing. Visualize the prana is coming in. Visualize that prana is going to the organ of healing. For me, it was my heart. I had open heart surgery 19 years back. Prana is coming to my heart. If you have back pain, visualize prana is coming through your back. Diabetes, if you visualize prana is coming to your pancreas. Or pranic healing. Essentially, you finish with an alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. Visualize the breath is coming out through your left nostril. Visualize your breathing through your left nostril, breathing in. Visualize your breath coming out through your right nostril. Visualize your breath coming in through your right nostril. 
visualize your breath is coming through your left nostril. I can clearly see with my eyes closed my breath is coming in through my left nostril coming out to the right nostril coming in through my right nostril coming out through your left nostril you continue this and you continue this at home continue this in a nice quiet environment you enter into a state of meditation and we call meditation is medication. The level of meditation, body secrets, all the medication, you will be disease-free, medication-free, enjoying a good quality life. Slowly bring your hands in front of you, touch your little finger and thumb, separate your ring finger, middle finger and index finger, this is called Padma Mudra, Lotus Mudra. It connects your body, mind and spirit. Slowly bring your hand close to your heart. Yoga gives us this wellness. Wellness does a healing. Physical wellness, mental wellness, spiritual wellness. Physical wellness gives us strength and stamina. Mental and spiritual wellness gives us healing. Slowly put your hand in front of your heart chakra, bow your head down, then you rub your hands, rub your hands, the palming and cupping. When you feel the warmth in your hands, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses, put the hands over your eyes, let the eyes take all the heat from your hand, massage your forehead, massage your eyes, massage your face, massage back of your ear, Massage front of your ear, your tragus, external auditory canal. Massage your carotid sinus in the front and the back. It's a wonderful practice. This is called yoga therapy, the scope, evidence and evolution. This is done to establish yoga therapy as a respected and established speciality in our healthcare system. Thank you again for joining us today. This is a Saturday morning, regular class. We'll be doing again in another Saturday morning, next Saturday, and I'll let you know the subject. Generally, I pick up the subject based on the request. If you request me, I'll pick up the topic. Okay, thank you again. We'll see you next Saturday.